Hey guys and welcome back to Yak Wax Lips. My name is Michael, your point and click adventurer, and this is episode 16 of Let's Play Broken Sword 2, The Smoking Mirror. In the previous episode, we got kind of stuck here. I thought it's glitched. It still might be glitched. I'm still not sure. A few of you in the comments said that it could be glitched. A few of you have just suggested to uh, just try a few things. So, um, what I'm going to do first, Leila Lana, long time, uh, long time watcher, hello, how are you? Suggested I look at a few things first. So if I look at this guy. Maple syrup had dribbled down Bert's face and shirt. Yeah, did that. It was the famous movie Sharon. star. Sharon somebody or other. She couldn't act and she had a voice that could crack glass. But it wasn't hard to see why Hawks wanted her in his movie. Yeah, Bosch, we've looked there in the bush. There was a hornet's nest somewhere in that bush. Okay, Hawks. The great director. Well, that's what his pose was supposed to say. He reminded me of Ed Wood. All right. Cameraman. It was the cameraman. Haiku. It was teen idol Haiku McEwen in his first starring role. All right, okay. So, basically, what I'm going to try and do, I'm pretty sure, I'm 90% sure, he's already got stuff down his chin. 90% sure that I'm supposed to throw one of these buttons in here. And it's supposed to make the bees hornets come over here. So we're going to try that a few times. And if it doesn't, I'm going to pause it, read a walkthrough, which I don't think I've ever done before. This is not on a Let's Play anyway. And then, um, and then take it from there. They might be glitched. I have got loads of save files, um, so it's not a problem. Um, to unglitch it, touch wood. So I'm going to throw a few in here. Because the other thing I was thinking... Um, Late, late at night, the other night, when I was just lying in bed, staring at the ceiling in frustration. All I think about is Broken Sword 2 throughout my entire life. Um, is maybe I should do it like, maybe I should just keep throwing rocks in there. I've got a feeling that might be it, but I kind of half think it's might be glitched. Let's give it a go! Those hornets were not pleased. You see, those hornets were not pleased. So, I don't know, maybe I have to just keep throwing it. Like, I'll try it. Five times. And if after the fifth time doesn't work, I will. I will do what I said. Sacrilege. Oh, we worked. I'm sure I did it two times last time. Cut and thrilled. Okay, the next scene is down on the beach. This is where Hawkins finds the treasure in the Cave of the Crabs. Would those be giant killer crabs by any chance? Giant mutant killer crabs with attitude. There it was, the rock I'd seen from the camel's hump. Now that I was close up, I could make out a small cave near the top of the pillar. Who, me? I want you to stay right where I can keep an eye on you. I'm not one of your lackeys, Hawks. I go where I like. Not here you don't. The movie company has rented this island for the duration. You're trespassing. Do as you're told or you're gone. Oh, man. Uh, I, feel, I feel slightly annoyed by that bee puzzle. Like, I'm pretty sure I threw two, three, four rocks in it. Maybe maybe I just had to, like, restart and save it and reload. But, uh, anyway. So, the thing we need to get up to is this here. So, I'm kind of thinking... Well, I don't know what I'm thinking. I have no idea. I'm going to lay it out for you. I don't know. I don't remember this part at all. I'm assuming I'm gonna, he's not going to let me just go. Hey, get out of shot. All right. So I'm not allowed in the shot. I mean, if he just lets me up there for five minutes, that's all I want to do. They're not even doing anything.
Are we going to talk to anyone? Oh, he's getting angry. Is he? No? Hey, Haiku! Yeah. <laughs> Take your time, mate. Yeah, man. There was nothing else I wanted to ask him. Well, that was worth it, wasn't it? All right, let's talk to Bert instead. Hi, Bert. Don't you eye me. Fine friend you turned out to be. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did just make bees. It wasn't even bees, it was hornets run after him. What's it like to work with Carlton Hawk? Flipping misery, mate. Look, Bert, what's wrong? You got a bloody nerve. If I didn't know better, I'd have thought you gave me that pancake just so them hornets would go for me. Oh, Bert, you've wounded me. How can you think that? Well, by looking at the evidence. <laughs> I don't know why you still want to be a stuntman anyway. Well, this is all I know, isn't it? If I don't do this, what do I do? Well, how about being a stunt coordinator? Being a what? You stand around in a big jacket and a baseball cap, telling the stunt people what to do. I can do that. Hey, you've done the job for years and you're not dead. That's got to be good for morale. Well, I don't know. You get your own megaphone. I'll do it. <laughs> George Stobart, international adventurer and roaming careers advisor. Ah, oh, I reckon I have to change this guy so that I become the stuntman and then maybe he'll let me into, sh into the shot. What films have you worked on in the past? Remember Death Stalker of the 10th grade? The psychotic biker what crashed into the school bus? <laughs> that was me. Or what about They Prayed to Satan? I was the bloke in the hospital scene. You know, the one who caught fire, fell through the flipping skylight. I don't think I caught those. Must be cool getting to travel the world like this. Yeah, nice here, innit? My Beryl used to love the seaside. Day out at Clacton. Bloody smashing. <laughs> a pint of jelly deals washed down with a bottle of brown. Quick feel on a big wheel and a stroll around the town. Course them days, you could live like a flipping king on ten bob a night. Tombola, frothy coffee at the calf of the prom. You know, I don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I do. Maybe all the rest of you English people do as well. That sounds like my holiday. <laughs> I've had a great idea. How about you dress up as Jim Hawkins and climb up to that cave over there? What cave? That cave? You must think I'm balmy. I did me back in being chased by them ornits over that flaming stockade wall. No way am I going up there. Well, that narrowed the field. Okay, I'm I'm gonna have to go up there, aren't I? That's gotta be it. Um handheld camera flash. Right, let's talk to this guy then. There was nothing else I wanted to ask the cameraman. Can I take the camera? Probably not. Yeah, 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 hang on there a minute, champ. No messing with the equipment of the union will be down on you. Oh, okay. Now can I talk to him about it? There was nothing else. No, what about Hawkins? Or Hawks, sorry. Why don't you use that cave up on the rock pillar at the end of the beach? We don't have a stuntman anymore. Hey, I'll do the stunt. I appreciate the offer, but if you fall, you'll sue us. No, I won't. Everybody hear that? I hide it. Good enough, we're covered. Got any experience? Death-defying leaps, desperate fist fights, getting caught in explosions, <laughs> you name it. <laughs> okay, people, move out. We're shooting the scene at the end of the beach. No, we're not. The camera's still bogged down. Shoot, I forgot about that. No go, Stobart. We'll have to use this cave after all. Oh, what if I have to get this handheld one and just get up there somehow? You don't look happy. Why should I be happy? Look at that cave. It's supposed to be where the treasure is. So? Look at it! It's crap! Does that look like the sort of place anybody would hide treasure? I should have had props build me a proper damn cave. A cinematic cave. What do you mean, a cinematic cave? One with drama. Danger. One that looks like the mouth of a big stone skull would be cool. But I'd settle for drama and danger. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of thinking I have to use the handheld camera and climb up there. But I guess he won't let me. Flash? Yep. We can't film at the Needle Rock because the camera's bogged down, right? You got it, champ. So why can't we use the portable camera instead? You know, that's a pretty smart idea. 
Well, come on then. Let's use it. I didn't know the first thing about using the camera. Can we talk to him about it? Yes. I've been talking to the cameraman. He's got a portable camera. So? So you can use the cave in that rock pillar at the end of the beach. That's a dramatic cave if ever I saw one. We ain't got a stabilized harness for it. The camera will wobble. Did D.W. Griffiths have a stabilized harness when he made Birth of a Nation? You're right, damn it. Hitchcock, Wells, none of them needed one. For crying out loud, Sam Raimi stabilized his camera on a plank. Props, get me a plank. We're gonna wing it. Hot dog. We're gonna do a cinema verite pirate movie. George, get to wardrobe. We're gonna make you a star. On my way. <laughs> George Stobart, film star. <laughs> Ready when you are, Mr. Hawks. Love it. I returned to Guaramonte and found that Georges had left a message with Conchita. He'd already left for the Indian village, so I hurried to catch up with him. When I arrived, I found a scene of desolation. These sunglasses are Georges. Georges, where are you? Titipoco, I'm almost glad to see you. Little asshole, <laughs> what happened here? Are you responsible for this? Uh, and where's Georges? Have you seen him? Uh uh. He was pointing to the remains of a burned out hut. <laughs> oh dear. He's in his barrel. How are you doing, Nico? The barrel was too heavy to move. Smash I didn't need the lantern since it was still daylight. Besides, it was broken. What else have we got over here? Come on, what are you doing? No? Is that it? Right click on it. It was a smashed lantern. Probably the cause of this destruction. So we've got a barrel, oh, what did that say? Mayan, Mayan stone. I mean, I presume that's what we need. It's quite important to the story. It was too hot to pick up. Too hot to pick up, then use your handbag, maybe? No? Oh, I guess it's got, this has got water in it. Maybe we have to talk to Titipoco and get him to help me with the barrel. These are George's sheds, right? Has he been here? George! <gasps> Where is he now? What's that? It looks like the stone we bought from Paris, but it's different. Yes, it has a carving of an eagle. That clinches it. George must have found this stone in the Caribbean and managed to hide the stone when the village was attacked by Karzak's men. I hope to God that Georges was all right. Where's Georges? Georges has been here, right? 
he was pointing to the smoldering remains of a hut. I don't think he'll be in there, otherwise there's going to be no more broken swords. There's another barrel here, maybe... Oh, a cup. cup. I am missing quite a few things. There was nothing in the barrel. Let's get the cup. That cup was no use to me. It had a hole in it. Okay. Uh, what else can we see around here? Barrel, cup. That barrel would have looked great on my patio, filled with shrubs. Now's not the time, Nico. It was a small drinking vessel made from some kind of gourd. Um, let's try again. In fact, let's right-click on the barrel. I feel like it's got water in it and we have to pour it over here. The water could have cooled the stone if I could figure out a way of getting it into the barrel. Push it over again. Come on, Titipoko. He's not going to help out, is he? Little swine. I just didn't have the strength to tip that barrel. Ask him. Hey, Shorty, <laughs> make yourself useful and help me with this barrel. Pick it up George's quips, isn't she? Brilliant. Thanks. Thank you very much, Shorty. I recognize that. It's the Coyote Stone. I had the coyote and jaguar stones. Titipoko had the eagle, according to the shaman. That's all we needed to deal with Tezcatlipoca. Pity he hadn't any ideas for dealing with Kauzak. What is it? Where are you pointing? Over here, was it? Exit. We arrived to find Georges being led up the stairs. We clearly didn't have much time. Oh dear, are we in the end game? I feel like this is culminating fairly quickly. Obviously a rope, it's an adventure game. You're gonna need that. Oh, we just hold it though. Um, okay. Maybe... Lever, engine, what did that say? Gantry, elevator. Let's stick on the engine. No, of course not. Let's have a look around first then. Can we push the button first? We need to turn the generator on first, don't we? I feel like that's what we need to do. The button didn't seem to do anything. Okay. Fuel line, generator. What was that I have to pick up? Cylinder. Okay, what have we got there? What is that? It was a small screw fit cylindrical housing. Okay. Um, maybe use that. No. Where's the hose? Fuel line. Oh dear, there's a guy there. Shall we cut the fuel line? Oh dear. Oh, maybe, maybe we have to torch. Maybe we have to f set fire to it. Use that with fuel. No. If we talk to him, am I going to die? I feel like I might die if I talk to him. Hey, senorita. Too late. I had been seen. Oh, no. Am I going to... What's going on? Bonjour, capitaine. <laughs> Only sergeant, pretty one. What are you doing here? Uh. Uh. Oh dear. Uh. Karzak, General. This guy. Snuggles said I could come here with him. Snuggles? Oh, I mean the general. We are uh friends. May I go up the pyramid? Ah, uh, we have strict instructions not to let anybody pass. Oh, but I've told you who I am. Surely nobody would mind. Well. Oh please, I'd be ever so grateful. I tell you what. I'll ask Pablo if it's okay for you to go up. If Pablo saw me, I'd be dead. Uh, no, it's not worth the bother. I'm not really that interested in their stupid pyramid anyway. Well, okay. It's men's work up there anyway. 
I'll just run along and play around here, okay? <laughs> okay, you do that. Oh, that was close. Um, right, let's pick up this torch, maybe. I could think of no reason why I would want to pull a heavy torch from the ground. Yeah, me neither, to be honest. That fuel is... Uh, there's a lot there, isn't there? Do we have to soak anything? Maybe. Maybe we have to soak the rope in the fuel. Because we might have to set fire to it at some point, maybe? No. Um, what are you doing, Nico? Just walking over to the fuel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fuel. Fuel line. Um, let's get a bag full of fuel. Mm, no. So what I'm thinking is we need to turn this generator on so that we can make this um, elevator work. Right, it's not powered, obviously. The button didn't seem to do anything. No. Let's talk to Titipoko. Ask him to... Ask him to do anything. Ooh, chocolate. Would you like some chocolate, Titipoko? It's good vintage. <laughs> You're smarter than you look. <laughs> How did you hook up with a maniac like Karzak in the first place? Karzak? Whoop, whoop, loco! Yes, he scares me too. Okay, so maybe use the rope with the gantry. Kind of feel like you might need to, to use that. Let's let's see. No. Nope. Don't walk over to the gantry, Nico. The scaffold gantry went all the way up the pyramid. Maybe I maybe I use it with Titi Poco. Titi Poco, I have an important job for you. Take this rope to the top of this scaffolding and throw it over the top. Rope. Excellent. We have a rope, an almost complete elevator. Guess I have to tie that to the to the engine. Awesome. Brilliant. Is there anything we can do here? What's this lever do now that I've now that I've um, put it together? Anything? No, because it's not powered, this needs... Generator needs to be on. Hmm. Alright, okay. So we've got to power this elevator. We've got to get to the top to save George. Um, but we're going to leave him up there until the next episode. Uh, so thank you very much for watching, guys. I think the next episode could possibly be the last but if not there's it's very very near the end so yeah thanks very much for for watching today and across the and across the series um so please leave a like i really appreciate it and until next time have a wonderful morning or afternoon or evening whatever it is you are doing right now and take care <laughs>